Ever since Jeff Bezos started Blue Origin, this would seem to be the culmination of his ambitions. That is to say, building a facility in orbit that's capable of carrying out manufacturing and microgravity and other kinds of experiments that we can't carry out on Earth. The first step in transitioning industry, which of course is damaging to our environment, out into space. Of course, Orbital Reef has other purposes as well. But this is the most important purpose that this station has, at least as far as Jeff Bezos is concerned, because this has been Blue Origin's goal all along, or so Jeff Bezos would have us believe, that we want to transition all of the things that are damaging our environment, polluting our soil, polluting our atmosphere, and contributing to global warming out into space, and also mining and other industries out into space, thus removing these destructive activities from our planet and saving the future of human civilization. He doesn't want to make us into a multi-planetary civilization. He wants to make us into a spacefaring civilization. And so all of this space tourism that he's so well known for now, this is just a sideshow. These are just opening shots in his salvo to get the human species out into space and all of our damaging industry with us. But is this really the case? Do we really need to wait for a full-fledged space station to exist before we can start carrying out these kinds of activities? Well, it would seem so. I mean, how can you transition a huge facility out into space to start carrying out manufacturing without a space station? Don't we have to be patient until the next generation of heavy launch vehicles vehicles like Starship and New Glenn exist before we can start working on something that ambitious? Well, actually no. There's a company in the United Kingdom that's going to start manufacturing in space this year using nothing more than a micro satellite. That's right, no space station, no vast structure in space, just a tiny satellite being deployed by Virgin Orbit, and they are going to carry out the first step in a large-scale industry of manufacturing and microgravity that doesn't require a space station of any kind. And as a matter of fact, a space station, and especially the humans on it, would be counterproductive to this kind of industry. What am I talking about, and how the hell can a small UK company actually carry this out? We're going to find that out in just a moment. So as I mentioned before, it's long been thought that before mankind can really start manufacturing anything in space, we're going to need something like New Glenn and Starship. New Glenn has a tremendous amount of payload capability in its own right, 45 metric tons up to low Earth orbit with a fully reusable first stage and possible reuse of the second stage based on research that Blue Origin is doing right now. But of course, it's going going to take a long time before this rocket is available, assuming that it ever is available, and indeed something like Starship is probably at least a year away, if not longer, from being practical for deploying large amounts of payload up into low Earth orbit. So really, it's going to be a considerable amount of time before we can start manufacturing in space, right? 
Well, as I said before, that's not actually the case because manufacturing in space doesn't have to be done on a vast scale to be useful. And the reason for that is manufacturing here on Earth is very problematic for a variety of different reasons and experimental work on manufacturing, 3D organ printing, and other things can be done on a small scale in space and still be extremely valuable. Gravity, for one thing, causes buoyancy, which prevents perfect alloying in metals of different densities. This is according to a company called Space Forge, a little British company based out of Cardiff, Wales. The folks who are looking to deploy the first space manufacturing satellite into orbit this year. On top of that, there's the problems with atmosphere. Atmosphere has a tendency to contaminate materials, even the cleanest of materials, and so therefore manufacturing processes have to have a variety of safeguards built into them in order to remove these sorts of impurities. The vacuum of space is an ideal place to remove these problems, obviously, and to manufacture new types of metallic alloys that aren't going to be sabotaged by the various impurities in the atmosphere. There's also the issue of temperature. You have to artificially generate the extremes in temperature that naturally exist in space. Cryogenic refrigerators to furnaces, temperatures are very difficult to maintain here on Earth and easy to maintain in space. And so this is where Space Forge comes in. Utilizing a manufacturing satellite called the Forge Star, Space Forge intends to make use of all of the advantages that you can find in low Earth orbit, from microgravity to vacuum to the immense power of the sun and also the extreme low temperatures that you can access in space, depending on whether you're on the sunlit or shadowed side of the Earth during your orbital path, you can manufacture all kinds of different things, specifically various types of new metallic alloys, things that we haven't been able to manufacture on Earth because of all the problems that I've already discussed. So this satellite is going to make use of all of the advantages that exist in low Earth orbits and then re-enter with its new products in tow. The customer then collects these products, the satellite is then refurbished and relaunched. So we're talking about a 100% reusable manufacturing service that can be sent to orbit by something as modest as Virgin Orbit's Launcher 1. Now granted, it's not going to be able to carry a substantial amount of payload, but this is just the first step. As a matter of fact, Forge Star isn't even going to be manufacturing anything this year. They're simply going to be testing the satellite and its ability to survive re-entry intact. However, the design seems very sound. Sound enough for them to get 7.6 million pounds in funding. Yes, that sounds like a pathetically small amount of money, especially when compared to the billion dollars a year that Blue Origin receives from Jeff Bezos. And yet, amazingly, it seems very likely that this small, modest British company is going to accomplish what Jeff Bezos has been setting out to do before he does. It's unbelievable. And plus, there's a lot of advantages to using this type of satellite manufacturing as opposed to doing it on a space station. Human beings are not predictable things. We move around, we push buttons, we bump into things, and even the slightest amount of vibration can sabotage sensitive manufacturing processes. Therefore, you use a satellite like this and scale it up, by the way, Instead of launching micro satellites in the future, you start launching 20, 30, 40 ton satellites into orbit and manufacture things on a much larger scale. Obviously, you're not going to be able to manufacture millions and millions of tons worth of material, but you are going to be able to manufacture extremely valuable materials that can't be made here on Earth. 
And the list of those materials is practically endless, including things like 3D printed organs and various types of pharmaceuticals that can't be manufactured in full gravity. It's much easier to 3D print biological materials in microgravity as opposed to trying to do it in full gravity where the material ends up in a puddle at the bottom of a petri dish. Imagine sending up genetic material harvested from your own organs and having one of these satellites manufacture replacement organs for you in the event that any of them should break down organ banks that are overtaxed to a tremendous degree these days would no longer suffer under these circumstances. Now, of course, it's going to be very expensive at first in order to be able to transport considerable amounts of material out into space, but I am very impressed that Space Forge intends to transport anything out into space for just a couple million pounds or perhaps even less than that, given how inexpensive Virgin Orbit is on their horizontal launch platform. If you're talking about the future where you might be able to manufacture something that weighs 20, 30 tons, that's a lot of 3D printed organs out into space for the cost of a Falcon 9. You really start to reduce the cost of these sorts of things tremendously. And then once things like Starship and New Glenn do come into service, the price drops even further. And all of this without a space station, all of this without vast numbers of astronauts working on it, all of this without having to cram the schedule of your 3D printed material or your specific new types of alloys into the crowded work schedule of an ISS astronaut, which has proven impossible for many years simply because these guys are so overworked as it is. Speaking at a recent conference in London, Josh Western, who is the CEO of Space Forge, had some amazing things to say about space manufacturing. He put it in a way that I've never heard before. Quote, Earth is an incredible place to live, but it's a terrible place to build. That is because we have to fundamentally compete against pretty much all of Earth's natural base instincts and forces in order to build pretty much everything. Space provides a much, much better manufacturing baseline for almost any material. Going into space enables about a billion new alloy combinations through a combination of microgravity, high purity vacuum without the need for multi-stage pumps, and accessing extremes of temperature of plus to minus 260 degrees Celsius, just depending on which way your platform is oriented. The applications that we're focused on at Space Forge are really in the advanced material sphere, and that allows us to develop new types of semiconductors, new types of composites that can leapfrog the state of the art about a hundred times in terms of performance through improvements in thermal capacity and power handling. And here's the best part of all, in my opinion, at least as far as Jeff Bezos' ambitions are concerned. Quote, our objective is to be truly the world's first carbon negative space company. Company. My ambition is that for every kilogram of carbon dioxide we create at Space Forge, we prevent 15 tons from ever entering the atmosphere. That's exactly what Jeff talks about all the time. So here's my question. This is what pisses me off. Why the hell is this company not getting more investment or why are competing companies not coming out right now? Because it's not just about the manufacturing. It's also about the method, the ease of manufacturing, the low cost of this solution, and also some of the unique technologies involved. For example, it's reusability. As I I'm recording this, I don't fully understand how this company intends to reuse this satellite in the first place or how it's going to survive re-entry. 
They describe it sort of vaguely, quote, underpinning this technology is a novel return from space methodology that does not use an ablative heat capsule. The Forge Star's re-entry mechanisms enable a significantly more gentle return from orbit, enabling full platform recovery and reuse. This return technology can be adapted for in-space manufacturing missions for return to Earth, landing on other planetary bodies, and other in-situ resource utilization applications. That's really cool, but how the hell are they going to do it? Well, I intend to find out because I recently sent them an email requesting an interview. And finally, here's the coolest thing of all. I know I've already talked about things that I find to be incredibly cool about all of this, but this is the neatest thing. The fact that this is a humble British company based out of Cardiff, Wales, that's going to be launching not from Cape Canaveral, but the first maiden launch from Spaceport Cornwall on Virgin Orbit's Cosmic Girl. That's going to be an amazing moment for the UK. A British company sending a new type of technology, a breakthrough reusable type of technology that could transform the future of manufacturing and save our environment. I know I sound like I may be exaggerating all of this, but I'm really not. I believe in what Jeff Bezos has to say, at least in principle. I think that if we do export our manufacturing off of Earth and start building these damaging things in space, we are going to save our environment and also produce breakthrough technologies, new types of materials, and new types of medicine on top of all kinds of other things and all the jobs that go with it. And all of this is being spearheaded by the United Kingdom and Spaceport Cornwall. I find that to be exciting as hell, and I look forward to continue covering this in the future. And if you want to help me do it, subscribe to this channel. It's very important that you do that to keep this channel going. And also, if you'd like to support me in other ways, there are ways to do it in the description. Also, while you're at it, please subscribe to Space Forge. Subscribe also to Spaceport Cornwall and to support these new private space flight initiatives that are going to produce some amazing things for the human race in the future. So until people like Jeff Bezos start putting their money where their mouth is and invest in companies like Space Forge who are looking to make his dreams a reality a lot quicker than he ever imagined until he actually does this. I urge all of you to stay angry about space. <laughs>